Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I wanted to talk about a subject that I probably get the most questions about, and that's headroom. And we're going to take a look at headroom from a recording perspective, mixing, and mastering perspective. This is information that I've gathered from reading and listening and watching videos from pros and non-pros. And what I'm trying to do is consolidate it into one quick video where you can learn about what headroom is and why it's important to your mixing. So let's take a, take a look at the first question, which is, what is headroom? So in one sentence, headroom is the empty space between the highest peak of your audio signal and zero dB on your meter. So if you look at this picture here, we've got a meter. You can see faintly, but you can see the dB indicators on the, the bottom there in black. And right there, I've got a green stripe going across around minus 10 dB. And let's say that's my maximum peak. That space between minus 10 dB and zero is headroom. No sonic information is going to ever live on your particular track in that area. That's headroom. Pretty simple. So let's take a look at headroom in a mono recording. Okay, so here I've got a picture of a DAW, and you see up top there you've got the wave. This is one of the things that always confused me when I first started doing digital recording. How big should that wave image be? Should it be way up to the you know the top, or should it be somewhere in the middle, or should it be real small? I didn't really know, so I looked and read and did some experiments, and I came up with what I think is acceptable, we'll talk about in a second, but basically to show you how to how to view this on your in your DAW, in my DAW I use Studio One, it's got a pretty good, some pretty good functionality here. If you look on the lower, when you blow up the, uh, the wave image, you can see on the left hand side there, it's got uh, the dB uh, marking, so you can actually see where your signal is falling on the dB chart. So you've got right in the middle is minus 36 and then up to zero dB, which is the top. Now you see that green line going across there, that's my maximum peak of minus eight dB. So anything above that is headroom. You can see that red uh, swash there is basically showing you where the headroom is from minus eight dB up to zero dB. So that's how to look at this in a DAW. Now, I've always found that if you keep the middle third to your wave lake image, that's probably right about where you want to be if you want to do it in simple terms. But we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go on here. Let's take a look at a stereo recording. So here we've got two channels, stereo, and you can see on my DAW, I've got, if you look at the bottom picture there, it's got two dB charts, one for the left and one for the right. So you can see I've got a balanced signal and my max peak on both is minus eight. So the headroom on both of those tracks goes from minus eight up to zero. That's my headroom. Pretty simple. That's basically what headroom is. So let's take a look at why it's important to have headroom and why clipping or go, going over minus zero dB is bad. So first of all, when you have clipping, it creates digital distortion, which sounds terrible. I mean, if you do some experiments on your own and you boost up the input gain on recording an acoustic or a vocal and you go over zero dB and play it back, just listen to how horrible it sounds. You definitely never want to be there. And if you have this on multiple tracks in your mix, the distortion is going to pile up and you're going to have this big mess that you're going to try to fix. And there's just really, there's really no way to do it. You've got to make sure you record it correctly. Analog distortion is okay. You know, that's basically what they call harmonic distortion. You're using an analog board and you can boost it up past zero. And that's where some of the confusion comes in. Because in digital, you cannot do that. When you hear digital distortion, you'll see it's bad. And you can see this graphic here. Anywhere from quiet up to zero dB is safe. But once you go over that, you're in the danger zone, the bad zone. So let's talk about acceptable levels for recording. Did a lot of research on this reading and looking at different things and I, articles and videos and stuff. And the consensus is that minus 20 dB average is right about where you want to be with peaks between minus 8 and minus 10. When you're recording your instrument, you want to make sure that your maximum peak is minus 8, minus eight to minus 10. Most DAWs have peak meters with hold, so you can actually see like a line where it shows you where the peak is. And there's different plugins and tools you can get to help you monitor where your peaks are. But take extra care to make sure that you're not going over minus 8. You don't want to be over minus 8. So that's acceptable recording level. So let's take a look at why we need headroom. The first reason why we need headroom is to eliminate digital distortion in your mix. 
That's the most important reason. You can't really expect to have a clean, cool sounding mix if you've got digital distortion all over your mix. All right. What I'd like to do now is I'm going to switch to Studio One and want to take you through a track and show you an example. Okay. So here we go. All right. So I have a, a bass track here and I want to show you digital distortion. Now, please be careful. Low, you might want to lower your volume a little bit uh, when I get to the the later portions of this because I'm going to boost over 0 dB so you can hear digital distortion, okay? So here I'm going to show you. This is a bass track I have. You can see my max peak here is about minus 8, somewhere around there, so right within the realm. You can see it's about, you know, a little more than a third, but right about a third of the graphic space here. So let me play this at an acceptable level at about minus 12 dB. Here we go. That sounds pretty good, and I'd be able to mix that, add, you know, compression, whatever. And I'd still have some room to play if I wanted to boost up the gain on it at all. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it to around zero. Here we go. Watch your speakers now. That's about zero. And I had one peak there that went above, okay? Now I'm going to go above zero. So just watch the volume on your speakers. It's just I want you to hear what digital distortion sounds like. Okay, that's enough of that. So you can imagine if you had that on multiple tracks and it was building up, it would cause major problems in your mix. So you, you definitely want to stay away from that. So that's just an example of uh, digital distortion. Another reason why you need to leave headroom is you want to be able to, to add gain and dynamics and EQ application to enhance your, your mix. Now, if you get it right at the source, you may not have to do a lot of this, but you want to leave enough sonic space so that you can do these things to enhance the sound of your track, and you need that headroom to do that. The final reason you need headroom is once you create your great sounding mix, you want to have it mastered. And you, in order for it to be properly mastered, you need to leave headroom. So let's talk about mastering. So most mastering engineers will ask you for headroom, and the one I use asks for between 3 and 5 dB, minus 3 and minus 5 dB. And I've seen others that ask for around the same. So I try to keep it around 4 or 5 to give them plenty of room. Now, you know, you heard of the loudness wars. They have enough room to make your mix loud if you leave it at minus 3 peak. This is the peak now. This isn't the average. This is the peak. So when you run through your song, you want to make sure you don't have a peak above minus 3. And why do they need this? They need it to be able to apply their dynamics and the EQ and all the other crazy stuff they do, you know, to polish your mix up and make it sound fantastic. So you want to do your mastering engineer a favor and make sure you go through your song and you don't have a maximum peak above minus three to minus five. So some final thoughts. It's important, as you've heard many times in many places, to get it right at the source. When you're recording acoustic guitar, electric guitar, bass, vocal, whatever, Take the time to make sure that your recording levels are within a sound frame. You want to make sure that you're averaging about minus 20 dB and you don't have a peak above minus 8 dB. If you do that, down the road, you're going to start to see that your mixes are going to sound better and better and better. So thanks for watching my explanation on Headroom. Hope this was helpful. Please comment, subscribe, and hit the like button if you like what you saw today. You can visit my website. It's hometracksaudio.com. My email address is on the website if you have a question about mixing, whatever, and I can help you. I'll be glad to help you. Again, I hope this was helpful. Please uh, share the site and my YouTube channel with others if you feel comfortable doing that. Again, thanks for watching, and have a great day.